how do you feel about the people that keep pushing the narrative that Tupac, he changed after he played Bishop and Juice? It's weird, man. You got a whole lot of people pushing that narrative, man. I even seen platforms you was on asking you about that, man. Yeah, I mean, I, and I almost feel like we even talked about it a little bit, even the last time. But, you know, I'll, I'll say it again. Um, you know, Pac, he, he had a hard upbringing, right? He had an unstable upbringing. So he was very um, high strung and just, you know, ready to ready to move at any moment. Right. So originally um, the movie Juice, the script was actually given to me to audition for um, for Steel, the role of Steel in, in Juice. Right. But I knew that Tupac had had acting experience. So I asked him to help me. Um, you know, practice or rehearse or get ready for the script. As we're reading the script, I'm reading the role, the bush, the bishop parts, and I'm like, "Yo, this dude reminds me of you." You know, we all were saying that. So he was already the reason that he even came to even audition for it because that character reminded us so much of him. As I'm reading it, I was like, "Bro, this is this is you." You know what I mean? You you could go out for this, and then. Atrin, who was our manager at the time, he thought so as well. And through Atrin and um, I believe it was um, Kara Lewis with William Morris Agency who set up the whole thing originally. You know, they made some calls and they were able to get him the audition for the movie, not because he got the role and then started acting like this character. The reason that we even suggested that he audition is because there was this character that reminded us, us so much of him of how he already was, right? So, you know, I, I, from my experience, I like to say that, you know, Pac actually calmed down after Juice. He was wilder than that before, you know, because as he sort of got a little bit of fame and, you know, as you get older, you mature just slightly, even though we, we're still all, all still, you know, 21, 22, 23, however old we were when he shot that. You know, when I met him at 18 or 19, you know, when he was 21, 22, he was a little bit wiser, a little bit more controlled. He was learning how to deal with fame. That still didn't make him calm. He's still a wild dude. But I'm saying I knew an even wilder Tupac than before Juice. And that's just from my experience. Now, I can't control what people think or what people, you know, People are going to say what they want to say. People are going to believe what they want to believe. But if you want, you know, my opinion and, and from what I know, this is why he was able to audition for Juice. He got the part because he fit naturally for the part. He, did, he wasn't some mild dude that said, ooh, I want to act like this character. We thought he was already like, you know, the character reminded us of him. So we, through our networks, you know, he was able to audition. And he was a great actor, and he got the part. That's a hell of a quote, man. So Tupac, he was more wild before he played Bishop? Yeah, I mean, he, he you know, when we met him, he was living in the, um, the jungle in uh, Marin City. You know, it's like this little project city, and it was just a lot of wild stuff. He didn't, he didn't really have a place that he called his, his, his home home. You know, he was living with people, and moving around. He wasn't stable. You know, his mom was going through what she was going through at the time. He was just a very unstable day to day. Didn't have a, a, you know, he didn't have keys to anywhere. Right. So he was just in survival mode when we met him. And so, you know, it was like some, he was on some all or nothing. Like this is it. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, he had ultimate respect for um, Shock G and us as a group and Atrin and everybody at TNT Records and and our whole clique. And he had a respect for the culture that he, he wanted to be a part of it. So he didn't really like bug out on us, but I've seen him, I've seen him bug out. And then eventually once he got to know us, then the bugging out commenced. <laughs> but he was just, he was that guy. And that's another narrative, man, that I've been seeing lately. People talking about Tupac upbringing, you know, talking about if he really grew up poor or not. 
Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> and I also understand that people who just don't know, they think, I don't know what people think. They think, or maybe they just can't fathom that he, you know, he lived in from, from New York to Baltimore into the Bay Area, you know, even though he went to, to, you know, he went to the School of Arts in Baltimore, right? But he was still living in the hood in Baltimore and living in some, you know, in a situation that probably a child wouldn't want to or shouldn't have to live in, right? And when he came to the to the Bay, um, you know, he went to Tam High School, which is in Marin, the city of Marin, which is a predominantly white school. So when people learn that, they think, oh, he must have lived in a white neighborhood, but he didn't. He he was still living in the jungle and going to town. You know what I mean? And and you know, he was never he was always in an unstable situation. And, you know, none of it is, you know, your your when you're a child, it's not your fault, right? It's just how where you have to live and how you were raised. And, you know, he was just in some some situations. Even I had to learn that afterwards, right? Because I didn't know when we first met. I'm, you know, I'm in Oakland and I'm just, I don't know anything about Marin City. I don't know the difference between Marin City and Marin or Santa Rosa or San Rafael, whatever. It's all the same. It wasn't until I went out there and seen how he was living and met some of those people. I was like, wow, this is crazy. The other thing about Pac, having to move all the time, he was always trying to, you know, because he was never from that place. Once he left New York, he was always initially an outsider. So he had to, whatever he had to do to gain the confidence or let them know that he's cool or whatever. You know what that is. Growing up as a child, when you're not from there, they always they always put you through it to try to fit in or be accepted or whatever. So I'm sure it was, it was a lot of that happening growing up. Wherever your mama or your daddy, whoever taking care of you, wherever they move to or wherever they send you, that's where you have to live. You don't really have that choice until, you know, some people get emancipated at, age 16 or usually it's when you're 18 and then you are legally um considered an adult right but up until you know he moved to oakland oakland when he moved to oakland that was the first place that he lived somewhere by choice right he got his first apartment in oakland and you know um, shagji recipe shagji shmoovy shmoo they helped him get apartment that shmoovy shmoo was was managing um, in Oakland. And that was the first place, you know, we used to make jokes. That's the first place he had a set of keys to something. That's the first place he can go in and out on his own free will. He can put his clothes where he wants to. He can have the type of television or VCR that he wanted. That was the first place that Pac went where he chose to be. Other than that, he was just wherever he had to be or where, you know, where he was able to be you know, moving along with his family, his mom, his aunties, whoever he was living with at the time.